Welcome once again to Church Around the Corner, a broadcast that is dedicated to preaching the Word, preaching the cross, and preaching redemption to a lost and dying world. It's so glad to be here at WGNM, the channel for H-I-M. And who is the Him I'm referring to? I'm referring to none other than our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He is the mighty God, the everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. And I'm so glad to be able to come to you today and bring to you God's holy, infallible, inerrant, inspired, and authoritative Word. So today's message that I'm going to preach is entitled, The Watchman on the Wall. And boy, do we ever need watchmen on the wall proclaiming, Thus saith the Lord God in the nation in which we live today. So I want, you to take, I want you to go with me to God's Word. We're going to turn to Ezekiel chapter number 3. And we're going to read verses 17 through verse 21. It goes, and it goes like this. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. When I say unto the wicked, Thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. Yet if thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. Again, when a righteous man doth turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die. Because thou hast not givest him warning. He shall die in his sin, and in, in his righteousness, which he hath done, shall not be remembered, but his blood will I require at thine hand. Nevertheless, if thou warn the righteous man, that the righteous sin not, and he doth not sin, he shall surely live, because he is warned. And thou hast delivered thy soul. And here in Ezekiel chapter 3, we are introduced to a very important character, a very important person in Scripture. And that is none other than the watchman. And in the Old Testament times, the watchman was often the last line of defense. Whenever, the, whenever uh, everyone else was asleep at night, the watchman would be high above the city on the wall, and, and he would be looking out to see if the enemy would approach. And if he was asleep, and if he wasn't paying attention, then the enemy would come in and ransack the city and destroy the city. And that is why it is so important that we need watchmen in our day and time proclaiming the word of the Lord, not backing down, not backing up, not shutting up, because soon the Lord is going to show up. And when he shows up, I wonder, will he find us faithful? And, and, he's, and God called Ezekiel to be a watchman. Notice what it says in verse number 17. It says, Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. Here we see the watchman's call. And his call was to his own people. His call was, uh, was to the house of Israel. And here God speaks to Ezekiel. And Ezekiel has a choice. Either he can listen to what God has to say or he can reject what God has to say. But Ezekiel decides that he's going to listen to what God has to say because Ezekiel was a prophet that was chosen by God to declare the message. You see, the watchman is a man that announces, pronounces, and denounces. What do I mean by that? I mean, he announces the message with conviction. He is a man that is supposed to preach the word with 
conviction. And more than ever, in the United States of America, we need people that will proclaim the message with authority, with boldness, to confront the coldness. We need a, an awakening in our nation. But it will only start when the people of God that, 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 that are in the pulpit of God Proclaim thus saith the Lord God, and they do so with conviction, never backing down, never compromising the message. You know, sometimes in, in, in churches, methods may change. But my friend, the message must never change. The message must never be compromised. And that's exactly what Ezekiel the prophet was called to do. He, he was given a commission by God, and he says, I want you to give them warning from me. And you see, when we think about God, we often like to think about God as a loving and compassionate God. But the truth of the matter is that God is also a God of wrath. And He's also a God who does give warning in the Bible. We see it all the time when He warns people to turn from their sins. Because yes, there is a real literal place called hell. And it is a place of fire and everlasting torment. And as a minister of the Word of God, and as a pastor... And as a preacher of the word of God, it is our responsibility to proclaim, Thus saith the Lord. And if the Bible speaks on hell, then my friends, we must warn people of that horrible and dreadful place. Notice verse number 18. After God has told Ezekiel to give them a warning, this is what God tells him to say. He says, When I say unto the wicked, Thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life. The same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. You see, the watchman was was, was supposed to give a warning to the people and to, to the people of Israel who at this period of time was a rebellious nation, was a nation that no longer sought after God, was a nation that was steeped in idolatry and witchcraft and, 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 and all kinds of immorality. And he told them, I want you to warn the wicked. And, and if you do not warn the wicked. If you do not tell them of the impending judgment, if you do not tell them of, of the judgment that, that could come, if you continue in your sin, then what will happen is, is that they shall die in their iniquity, but, but, but their blood will I require at thine hand. In other words, if we are not faithful to proclaim what the Bible says, and we are not faithful to warn the people of impending judgment, then when they die, their blood is going to be on our hands because we have the opportunity to tell them about Jesus. We have the opportunity to tell them about impending judgment. But instead, we preach a message that would just tickle the ears. Of, of the masses instead of preaching thus saith the Lord and being bold about it and being non-compromising about it and you see and this is exactly what Ezekiel was called to do he was called to warn the wicked of their wicked ways and, and, and so much so in this day and time we live in a land that believe it or not for, for the most part has turned its back on God but I'm thankful that there's still a remnant of people that still love God and are still preaching the word of God with authority. I'm thankful for the ministries that are proclaiming the word of the Lord. And I just want to encourage you, pastor, preacher, or, or, or even just a lay person who's out there witnessing, who's out there sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. I just want to encourage you to continue to do that because uh, you never know. There may be somebody right down the road from you and if you don't witness, to them and God has laid it on your heart to tell them what God what, to tell them about Jesus and you don't do it then their blood will be required at thine hand because God has given you a command to go and tell that person about Jesus notice what verse 19 says it says yet if thou warn the wicked and he turn not from his wickedness nor from his wicked way he shall die in his iniquity but thou hast delivered thy soul in other words, if we warn the wicked and they do not turn 
And they do not change. You see, we have a message to proclaim. And that message is the cross. And, 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 and if we are faithful to proclaim the message and people don't receive it, and people walk out the same way that they came in, then that's not our fault. At least we did what God had called us to do and proclaimed the message with authority. And I want you to know, ma'am or sir, watching, if you don't know Christ, today is the very day of salvation. Don't wait another day. We're not promised another day on planet Earth. You never know, a semi-truck could come by and run you over. And where are you going to spend eternity? You know, I have been to so many cemeteries in my life. And I have seen so many graves in my life. And I wonder, where, have they, where did they go when they died? Did they go to heaven or did they go to hell? You know, because you see, once you die, you either go to one of two places. If you don't know Christ, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, you need to give your heart to Jesus. And if you do know Christ and you're a member of a faithful church and you, are, and you are striving to live for God, I just want to encourage you to continue to do so. And like the watchman, it's time that we stand up for the Lord Jesus Christ. It's time that we make our message known. It's time that, that, we, that we arise out of our complacency. And see a great work in our community for the Lord Jesus Christ. God won't use nobody that just sits on their blessed assurance. So I want to encourage you to get off your blessed assurance and believe God for something. Believe God for revival. Believe God for awakening. Believe that God will do exactly what His Word says He will do. I just thank you all for tuning in to... Uh, to WGNM today and to church around the corner. And I encourage everybody to be that watchman in your homes. Stand up for what's right in the, in the United States of America. Stand up for what's right all over the world. And I promise you God will bless you and God will use you. Feel free to call me if you want to. My number will be on the screen, my information. I would love to connect with you. I thank the Lord for you. I pray that Jesus will richly bless you in all you do. I pray that he will shower down his blessings from on high in your life. And just remember that we need watchmen on the wall. May Jesus richly bless you in all you do. And may he truly revive your day in the mighty name of Jesus. God bless you. Welcome once again to WGNM, the channel for HIM. In the first part of this, of this broadcast, we talked about the watchman, and that is indeed what I'm going to talk about in the second part. We talked about how the watchman was called to warn the wicked. But I want you to know that his call was twofold. Not only to warn the wicked, but to warn the righteous. And we see in verse number 20 of Ezekiel chapter number 3. But before we begin, let us say a, a word of prayer. Dear Father, Lord, I just pray, Lord, that your word would go forth with power and boldness, Lord. And I pray, Lord, you'd give me the unction. And I pray, Lord, that you would bless WGNM and this wonderful ministry. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Well, in verse 20, 
um, the, 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 the call shifts. Not only to warn the wicked, but to warn the righteous. Notice what it says in verse 20. It says, again, when a righteous man doth turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die, because thou hast not given him warning. He shall die in his sin and his righteousness, which he hath done shall not be remembered, but his blood will I require at thine hand. So in other words, he is told here that not only is he, is he to warn the wicked, and the wicked are those that do not know God. The wicked are those that, that are against God. Um, and he is supposed to warn them, but he's also supposed to warn the righteous. And the righteous are, are those that do know God, those that are saved, those that do belong to God. And, and, it, and it says that, that, that when a righteous man turns from his righteousness and he commits iniquity, and, and in other words it says if, if you don't warn him and he, and he dies in his sin, he dies in his sin and, and, and his blood will be on your hands. So as ministers we have the responsibility not only to preach to, the, to those that are lost, but we also have the responsibility to preach to those that are saved. And that is exactly what a watchman is. A watchman is much like an evangelist, much like a pastor, much like a, 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 uh, a minister. That, and, and, and we are called to proclaim the word of the Lord. We are called to do exactly what God tells us to do. And so we must warn the righteous. Why? Because we need a personal revival. We need revival in our lives. And, and what is revival? Revival is simply a refreshing. And, and there are all times in our lives as people of God that, that we kind of get off course from where we need to be. And sometimes we need the Holy Spirit to just rejuvenate our souls. And that's what happens when revival comes in. It rejuvenates. It refreshes. It's a powerful thing to see a church revived by His power. But here we see the watchman and he's called to his own people. He's not called to a, a foreign land and to, and to a people of a strange speech. Notice what it says in Ezekiel chapter 3 verse 4 through 6. It says, And he said unto me, Son of man, go get thee into the house of Israel, and speak with my words unto them. For thou art not sent to people of a strange speech, and of a hard language, but to the house of Israel. Not to many people of a strange speech, and of a hard language, whose words thou canst not understand. Surely had I sent thee to them. They would have hearkened unto thee. Notice verse 7. But the house of Israel will not hearken unto thee. In other words, it will not listen to God. For they will not hearken unto me. For all the house of Israel are impudent and hard-hearted. You see, it's interesting to me that he is called to be a, a prophet to his own kin, to his own land. And I believe that God is calling people. And God is calling people Maybe not necessarily to go overseas, but to be a prophet in their own country, in the United States of America. And that's what I believe God has called me to do, to be a voice crying out in the wilderness in the United States of America because we see a lot of similarities between the United States of America and the house of Israel. We see it described in verse number Six, it says, Surely had I sent thee to them, they would have hearkened unto thee. But the house of Israel will not hearken unto thee. In other words, the, the Israel, the, the God's chosen people, would not listen to God. They, they, would not, they, they would not listen to what he was saying. They would not hearken unto him. And this is so sad because here we have a people who God has showed up for time and time again. He delivered them. Uh, from Pharaoh. He put them in the land of milk and honey. He, was, he showed himself strong in their life time and time again. But in Israel's history, we see a period of prominence where God is really blessing the people. Why? Because they're heeding to his instructions. Why? Because they are listening to what God has called them to do. And so, and, and, and now we see that they, have, that, they have, that they have departed from that. And that thus, therefore, God is angry. And God God sends 
Ezekiel the prophet to proclaim the message to be a watchman because his own people have become stiff hearted they did not want to listen to the word of God and we have people in churches today that they, that, 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 that they hear the word of God but they really don't listen to the word of God because when they go out of the church they go out of the church the same way not changed and not transformed I truly believe that there are many a church folk that don't truly know God. Because if you truly knew God, you would do everything within your heart to live for Him. You would not be stiff-hearted. You would open your heart to the truth of the gospel. And that's why he says, Ezekiel, I want you to warn the righteous. I want you to warn God's people. I want you to warn my people because, yes, I expect a lot out of my people. I expect my people to listen to me and to do what I have commanded them to do. And therefore, Ezekiel, if you do not warn them and you do not speak to them the truth and you do not teach them the word of God and you do not declare unto them what I tell you to declare, then at the end, when it's all said and done, they will die and, 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 your, and their blood will be on your hands because, yes, the righteous, if they're living a right life, can do so much for God. But if they're not living right, then it's a hindrance to what God is wanting to do in the lives of people. Because let me tell you something, Mama, sir. People are watching you. Wherever you go, in the Walmarts, in the J.C. Penney's, in the places that you do business, and are you portraying a good Christian attitude when you're stuck in traffic and somebody runs in front of you? Oh, bless God, sometimes I'm guilty of it. But when somebody cuts in front of me, sometimes that just makes me mad. But I have to wonder, am I really portraying a good Christian witness when I get upset like that? And the truth of the matter is, is that we all need to be mindful of people around us. And because there's people around us everywhere we go that are lost. And they need to see us being salt and light in this world. They need to to see us living a right and holy life so that they will want what we have. And they will see the Jesus that's within us. Sometimes the only Jesus that people will ever see is a Jesus that's in you. They won't pick up a Bible, but they will see that you are a living living Bible. with the tablets of God's law written on your heart and written in your flesh. And when you walk, you will be, you will be living with Jesus. You will be walking Jesus. You will be talking Jesus. And the watchman had to be that example. Because if he wasn't that example in Israel's time, if he wasn't, he was the last line of defense. And that's what God is calling us to be. Watchmen on the wall were to warn the wicked. Were to tell them of their need for God. Were to warn the righteous. Were to tell them of their need to live holy lives. Notice verse 21 of Ezekiel chapter 3. It says, Nevertheless, if thou warn the righteous man, that the righteous sin not, and he doth not sin, he shall surely live, because he is warned. Also thou hast delivered Thy soul. So if we warn the righteous, and they and the righteous sin not, in other words, the righteous live they're holy and they and, and, and they're living for God, and we and, and, and they do not sin, and, and, and they're striving to live a holy life, it says he shall surely live. Because he is warned. You see, and that's the that, that's the watchman's call. He's to warn people. And he's to love people. And he's to do it out of a loving heart. And he's to do it because he wants to see God move in the nation. And my friends, we need a great move of God in the United States of America. And and I know no better verse to illustrate this than 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse number 14. It says, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal 
their land. You see, the watchman is called to give a warning to the people. But the people too have a responsibility. And the people can either accept the message or reject the message. You see, if we truly want God to move in our lives and in our nation, then the Second Chronicles 7.14 says that we need to humble ourselves. We need to admit that no matter how many accomplishments that we have, that we've dropped the ball. And we need to admit that we are sinners in need of the grace of God. And we need to pray. And I don't mean just pray. Thank you, Jesus, for the food. In Jesus' name, amen. I mean to have an attitude of prayer. Pray without ceasing. And seek my face. And turn from my wicked ways. He says, and then will I hear from heaven. God promises if we do these things, contingent upon doing these things, then he will hear from heaven. And he will forgive our sin. That's personal revival. And he will heal our land. That's national revival. The watchman was given a message. He was called by God. He was commissioned. And he did warn the people. And it is the people's responsibility to listen to the message and to apply it to their own personal lives. Again, I thank you for the opportunity to come on church around the corner. I pray that if you don't know Christ, that you will just turn to Christ. You can give me a call at any time. Pastor, if you'd love for me to come preach for you, I'd love to come preach for you in the local area. Uh, my Facebook information is on there. Um, I love you and I'm praying for you. I pray that Jesus will richly bless you in all you do and may he truly revive your day in the mighty name of Jesus. God bless. Are you a pastor or minister wondering if TV ministry is the right step to take? Well, we have the perfect opportunity for you to explore your options without a lot of expense or a long-term commitment. The Church Around the Corner is a program that features a different guest minister each week, and you can be a part of it. The cost is low, and there is no long-term air contract. Call or email me so we can schedule your appearance on Church Around the Corner.